Hello and welcome to today's episode of Rusty Duck Garage. So the question is, will it run? Yes, it runs. Yesterday we put a battery in this truck. It had some fuel in it and it fired right up and I drove it over here to my daughter's house. I bought the truck at a garage sale here in Lapine, Oregon from a gentleman that had bought this truck in uh, 2016, which would be what, seven years ago. He really never drove the truck much. He did put a clutch in it when he first got it, but he has a place in Arizona and he has a place up here. So he just never drove the truck. The truck sat out underneath the trees under a tarp for many, many years. And just recently pulled the tarp off of it and offered it up for sale. Now the truck hasn't been on the road. He hasn't driven it really anywhere. Yesterday I drove it for a block and a half uh, before I paid him. And uh, he said that had been the first uh, furthest it had been driven in quite some time, many years. So the old truck is uh, <clears throat> pretty beat up, but the uh, question is, will it run? Yes, I already answered that. But the bigger question is, will it make it home? I've got a 200 mile drive in this old truck that hasn't been on the road for many, many years. So I'm gonna look this old truck over and uh, see what it needs and uh, see if we can't uh, uh, fix a few things or maybe just ignore a few things here find out what's uh, going on with it and see if we can make it that 200 mile drive home You can see it's got a few uh, Whiskey dents in here here. Looks like they had the door open and backed into something here and uh, blew this door hinge. She's a little loose. That's okay Let's see if we can pop the hood it does have an inside hood release but as you can see, it did not pop up. But we'll get to it. There you go. Pops right up. Oh, and here we have a great big 250 cubic inch six cylinder engine. And she's pretty complete. Like I said, yesterday I put a brand new battery in it from Bimart. And she fired right up. It looks like somebody's worked on her. She's got a blue valve cover and blue side covers on the old engine there. And the starter's probably been replaced. Maybe even the fuel pump at one time. And the old uh, radiator there. She looks like a single core. Alternator belt there. Slash power steering belt. Doesn't look too bad. I think it'll survive the trip. 200 miles. Barring uh, no problems with the bearing locking up or anything like that. And it looks like the old master cylinder. She looks like she's leaking a little bit there. It's probably why there's a, a jug of uh, brake fluid behind the seat there. 250 cubic inches. Vinline six cylinder there. She just got her uh, flex fan on it looks like there. The old fan don't look like much there. It's kind of, she's a little beat. I don't know if you can see it there, but. Now this truck, he bought it from uh, the Crooked River Ranch in Madras, Oregon. And they have a golf course over there. And this truck was on the uh, golf course uh, maintenance crew there. They, and you can see that uh, the golf ball has whacked it many times. And you can actually see the little imprints from the uh, uh, dimples in the golf ball there. And the door there. And I think there's some up there on the roof there. And various places around. So, man, I don't know. But if you get whacked by one of those uh, golf balls, that's really got to hurt, I would think. <laughs> I've never been hit by one. And I don't want to get hit by one there. A little damage on the door there. Little whiskey bump there on the door. And for some reason, they had the fuel tape shut. But I noticed in one of his pictures, he had uh, uh, tape all across the windshield on the truck, too. I'm not sure what that was about. But you can see a few more bumps and bruises along here on the old step side bed. And I believe that's probably a 235. 75 r15 tire there and uh, we aired them up and they uh, seem to be holding air overnight here 
his tires really aren't too bad. They'll make it. And that headlight adjustment, nah, we're not gonna pay any attention to that. And not this one either, here. And she, you can see she's bumped and banged and bruised. But she's got all four hubcaps. That's a plus. And another dented fender door. Saw it. I thought I didn't think I ever saw it. Where are you going, buddy? Going to Costco. Costco. All right. Well, as you can see here, it's got a few uh, bumps and bruises on this side. As you can see here, the door's really knocked in, and and the lower rocker panel down here. Rocker panel's probably the worst damage on the whole truck there, but that really isn't that big a deal. And the step side bed here. They've done a little previous repair here whatnot and uh, the dogs are gonna check it out there hey guys gonna get out of there closes pretty nicely the door hinges on this side are good as a maintenance truck the guys were probably in and out of this driver's door over there many many times really wore out those hinges uh, a lot of short trips on this old truck i'd imagine any old bed rails pretty straight here, the tailgate's pretty banged up. I picked up this Huffy bicycle, had a free sign on it down the road here. And uh, I originally thought it was an old bike, but it's a repop, so it's not really much of anything. In fact, I'll probably find somebody to give it to. But we'll leave her in the back of the truck uh, for the ride home. Maybe we'll need it to ride. And she's got the step bumper on her there. I always thought these are kind of ugly, the way they stick out there on a step side. Any tailgate's been beat, even welded on a little bit. Probably would have worked a little better if maybe they'd straighten it first. But who knows. But let's take a look inside the old truck here. Oh, look at that beautiful red seat. Not sure if that's original seat, but... Uh, Bad as it looks, it's actually not that not that bad to set in. But as you can see here, because this uh, Central Oregon truck, no rust, no rust holes anywhere. Rockers are really awesome. The floor is really good. The worst is right there, and that's not bad. There's no rust holes of any kind. And that dash pad, uh, yeah, she's seen better days. She's a little uh, sun beaten there. <clears throat> Got a Pioneer stereo in her. She don't work. Roll up windows, and they do work nicely. Yeah, not bad at all. Got a fire extinguisher over there. Well, I decided the truck was good enough to go. And I thought I could make the 200 miles without any trouble. Although that wouldn't be too exciting. But stick around. We're going to fire up and head her on out uh, to Amity, Oregon, which is uh, about 200 miles uh, uh, when I go from applying the direction I'm going and going uh, on a little side detour and then going up to Woodburn. Here's our first stop at the Lapine State Park uh, entrance here, and then uh, down the road we go. Well, <clears throat> we got to be a little careful when we go to turn at the uh, intersections because we've got no no turn signal the stock is completely missing so i drove the old truck down the road a few miles here and she doesn't really make any really uh unusual noises abnormal noises when i say that like uh front wheel bearings rear wheel bearings transmission noise rear end noise, pinion noise, any of that stuff. It, it, see, it's pretty quiet. However, it does have one noise that it is a clunk. And it's not like a uh, shock that's loose or anything like that. I can't quite describe it. And I, I mean, other than it's just a clunk. And I, I looked around underneath. I did find a couple of loose bolts, but nothing serious. Don't think that's where the noise is coming from. But the, it is a, a thunk that is concerning that if it gets louder and develops, I can have a serious issue, but I don't know. We got 
200 miles. We'll just kind of pretend like it's not happening, you know, and uh, just see how it goes. I think she'll just go fine. And there she is, the old four speed. Just got our seat belt on, our fuel gauge is a little uh, erratic. Uh, not too concerning because uh, we're just gonna top her off with fuel up here in Sun River or Bend, Oregon. And we should, uh, we've got about 100 miles to go. So it'll, yeah, I'm gonna figure 10 miles per gallon. So if we get 20 gallons, uh, we'll make her home. So I did uh, roll underneath of her and hook up the speedometer. It's got a cable driven speedometer. And you can see she works, but she's a little erratic there, bouncing around. She's got like a fuel gauge, you never know what's gonna read there. But uh, that's all right. We'll just uh, we'll just take the average there. So that's pretty good. So the uh, license on the truck has been expired since 2019. So we tried to do the right thing yesterday and uh, drive her over to DMV and uh, transfer the title on this old hot rod here. But uh, yeah, DMV is only open on Thursdays in uh, Lapine, Oregon here. So uh, that didn't happen. And uh, this morning. Yeah, probably not gonna probably not gonna happen we're just gonna send her on her way and uh, head her home and see if we can't get some uh, uh, title transfer tomorrow there but uh, this morning about uh, 5 30 a.m. when the sun lots took off work it was about 26 degrees a little chilly out over here in the desert about 4,000 feet of elevation but she's warming up now uh, I expect she'll be about 80 degrees here a little later it's noon now here and pretty soon we'll be uh, using the old uh, 260 air conditioning. That's uh, two windows down, 60 miles an hour. So the old truck does have uh, power steering and power brakes, and they actually work quite well, surprisingly, uh, for setting as long as it, it has there. So it's going good. But we're uh, coming up to uh, Sun River, Oregon here, and uh, a friend of mine told me he has a buddy over here that has a uh, Savage Customs got a small YouTube channel, uh, so we're gonna try to find those guys. I've got their address and uh, duck in there, and maybe see what uh, kind of projects they might have going on. Well, when we got over to Savage Customs, no one was home and they weren't picking up the phone, so maybe they were off at work. So we stopped off in Bend and uh, topped off the fuel in the old Chev there, and you can see it took 11.2 uh, gallons. Even though the truck was running just fine, I thought it'd be a good idea to stop in and get some zip ties and maybe a pair of ice grips. Well, we're out here between Bend and uh, Sisters, Oregon, and uh, you can see the mountains in the background are absolutely beautiful there. The viewpoint here, uh, all the mountains around there, Three Sisters and Three Finger Jack, whatever. All those, but uh, the old truck's doing just fine, cruising along there, but the uh, exhaust fumes are kind of getting to me a little bit. Uh, we got the wing window open, but the uh, tailpipe is uh, broken on it. So I rolled underneath the truck there and reattached the tailpipe to the muffler, and that seemed to take care of the exhaust fume issue. Um, then I traveled on into uh, Sisters, Oregon. Well, it was lunchtime, so I stopped at the Snowcap Drive-In for a hamburger and a chocolate milkshake. Boy, were they were great. Well, I traveled 50 or 60 miles here, so we'll take a look around and see if there's anything leaking, gushing out of here. Don't see anything. Belt looks good. No leaks on the hoses, so we're not going to check the coolant because it's hot. We're not going to check the oil or anything. I suspected the brake fluid was leaking, but it's not, so we're okay there. Don't see any really issues, no problems here. So we're gonna continue on down the road here. <clears throat> it's on the edge of Sisters here at the new uh, roundabout that they recently installed. And yeah, we'll fight for position here. And uh, it says we've got 109 miles to uh, Salem, Oregon, and then we're another 35 miles or so from there. So. 
Well, the old truck was running so good, I just took a little detour and went down to Camp Sherman just to check it out. I hadn't been down there in a really long time, and this time of year, it's just uh, absolutely beautiful there. Didn't see any fish in the stream, but the old truck was hiding behind these trees, and she looked pretty good when you couldn't see the whole truck there. Well, all the shade trees at Camp Sherman made it really nice. I really hated to leave there. But we headed on back out to Highway 22 and headed up to Hoodoo Ski Ball area. Pacific Crest Trail access where it crosses the highway here and goes on up the road there. Probably not too many hikers will make the full trek from California to Canada. Uh, they start early in the year in California and then uh, try to make it all the way to Canada. But with as much snowfall was in the Sierra Nevadas this year, I really doubt that there will be many, if any, hikers that complete the, the, the trek all the way from California to Canada on the Pacific Crest Trail. The summit here is 4,800 feet. And across the way over there is a hoodoo ski ball, but you can't really see it from here. If I were to quit stopping here, I could make it to Woodburn Drag Strip for the Thursday night street legal drag. Driving through the Santa Am Canyon this time of the year is just spectacular. The flowers are all out, <clears throat> the water's up, the sun is out, nice and clear. Not a lot of ice and snow to worry about, like the winter time. In the old uh, canyon, they've done a lot of logging up the, over the years, and it's been logging community up there forever. Um, it it uh, seems to be more of a tourist area anymore than anything. But we finally made it to Detroit, Oregon, where I saw this snow cat in front of the old Detroit post office there. I thought that was pretty cool. There, I took a picture of it over the hood of the old uh, Chevy C10 there. And there's the picture of the lake, uh, which is at full capacity, which has not been that way in many, many years there. So and we headed out of Detroit down to Gates, Oregon, um, and then on into Salem, Oregon, where we jumped on Interstate 5 and headed towards uh, Woodburn Drag Strip. Oh, my phone had gone dead, so I had to MacGyver up a uh, phone charger for my phone. Well, we got the old C10 out here running with the big one. It's on the freeway. They drive a little faster. Well, I made it to the Woodburn Drag Strip for the Thursday night street legal drags. And they have a car show with the uh, drags there. And this little 1977 short wide box was absolutely awesome. And this 66 uh, C10, well, originally it was a C20. And here, this little cat eyes, silver all short bed along with this about a 7576 Scottsdale 20 with a LS motor in it. Well, I made it home just fine with the old truck. Never really had any issues other than the exhaust uh, broken tailpipe there. But I loaded up the truck and took it to the uh, Rick Rall swap meet where I took a bunch of uh, miscellaneous parts that I had to sell there and uh, did really well at it. My cousin Paul, he picked up this 1964 Chevelle Supersport with a 327 and a four speed at the Rick Rawls swap meet. Very fun car. On Monday, I got a call from Marlon who said he'd like to have the uh, 81 uh, C10 that I'd picked up over in Lapine. So I delivered it up to his house there. And Marlon said he had a 1967 Camaro that was giving him a little bit of trouble and he'd like for me to look at it. I had Marlon start the Camaro while I looked at it under the hood, and what I found was the car would hardly run. I got to listening and I could hear a vacuum leak, and I'd found a 3 8 line had come off, creating a huge vacuum leak. Once we took care of the vacuum leak, the car just ran beautiful. I don't think Marlon could have been any happier. And I hope that he's going to be just as happy with the old 81 Chev uh, short step side. I think he's got plans to lower the truck in the future and spruce her up a little bit and good for him because it's a nice rust-free truck with a give him a good platform to start from well i hope you enjoyed today's video and if you would please hit that like button that really helps us out when you hit that thumbs up